number five. Dealing with it. We've all dealt with it before. But DRI brought out the best way to deal with it in 1985. This album was released on Metal Blade Records. And you might be like, what the hell, Metal Blade? Well, by 1985, punk rock was pretty much dead. It had lost all kinds of interest. Punks got sick of the own, their own damn scene because it just sucked. There was so much fighting and angst, and that's not what punk is all about. So it pretty much started dying off, and by 85, it was pretty much done. So you saw a lot of bands turn to a more metal direction because metal was going places. So that's what DRI did. Now, they came out in 83 with the Dirty Rotten LP, which are just like 30 second songs, just fast as hell. I mean, DRI was labeled as the fastest band in the world at one point, but they pretty much brought that same style to the second album with much better production values. Now for this album, the guitarist Spike Cassidy and Mikey Offender from The Offenders played all of the bass tracks for the recording because at the time, DRI's bassist Josh Pape, who was pretty awesome, uh, had to go into rehab and wasn't available for the recording of this album. But he was available for some of their later releases and his bass playing is just superb. Now several of the songs are actually the same songs from the Dirty Rotten LP, just re-recorded and sound much better. Namely, I Don't Need Society, which has a whole new intro. But then you also have re-recordings of Couch Slouch. Yes, yes ma'am. But plenty of new good songs too, such as God is Broke, which is one of my favorites. God is broke! Well man dry, pay up what you can or you in the hell. Karma. So you got your reason, but you're out of black and lies. Story is out, what is the goal to me to die? Nursery home blues, which is kind of funny, just a song about an old person stuck in a nursing home. I gave them all the best, here's the bye-bye. Then you have Madman that has an actual live clip that was recorded from Kurt's basement or wherever they used to jam uh, at Kurt's house, Kurt Brecht, the vocalist, uh, because his brother Eric used to be the drummer for DRI and he actually designed the iconic DRI Skanker logo, which is probably the coolest logo in all of punk. But they were recording when Kurt and Eric's dad busts in and tells the bunch of dirty rotten imbeciles to basically keep it down. Well, here, you listen to it for yourself. Hold on. I didn't know you could hear it. No, I can't. Yep, that stuff hasn't done a bit of good. Okay, come to, the party's over. Okay. Don't you dummies ever understand anything? Got you gotta go to school to these others are dropouts. Right. What do you care? Can you watch you go to a goddamn bed? What's the matter with you? Dad, I you? Wake up. I don't know who this guy is, but He's you are. Uh, yeah, He's okay. Hey, come on. You come over here. Now. I don't want you here at night. You understand? <laughs> That's the only time to practice. Well, man. I don't give a goddamn hell what to. I, I come home to relax. I don't listen to you okay. and these other dummies. Yeah, when you come tell home, we'll stop. stop. I'm home. I've been home for four hours. You didn't tell us to stop, though. I'm telling you, stop now. Get okay. Now we're stopping. Now we're stopping. Now we're stopping. So this album just epitomizes hardcore. I mean, it is fast, it is mean, and some of the songs have been covered by bands such as Anthrax and Hatebreed. I mean, the songs are iconic, and it's just a lot of fun to mosh to. If you ever go to a DRI show and get in the pit, you're gonna get hurt. See this tooth here? It's not a real tooth. The 1999 DRI pit. There you go. Now, the last thing I'd like to mention is that the drumming on this album is just awesome. Felix Griffin is just a beast, and he brings it on uh, the next three albums after this one, too. So, 
Uh, the later albums head more into a lot more of a metal direction, starting with Crossover. But I definitely recommend all of them. But dealing with it, if you have to only buy one DRI album, this is the one to get. Number four. All right, now I might get a lot of arguments on this one, whatever. But fear, more beer. And I like it better than the record. And let me tell you why. So the record came out in 1982, but fear had been around since like 78, uh, terrorizing the LA scene. We all know fear, and we've probably heard all the stories about how they were buddies with John Belushi. John Belushi invited him on a Saturday Night Live. And then Fear set got cut short because of all the ruckus all the punks were causing. And the show just got freaking crazy and out of control. Which back in those days was not out of the norm. Anyway, you know leaving the guy has been in movies such as Clue. Uh, he had a small role, uh, a small cameo on the sitcom Three's a Crowd. Uh, the guy's been around. But here's why I like more beer better than the record, okay? So the record up until I Love Living in the City is just fantastic. Each song is just excellent. But I feel that the album takes a complete nosedive right after I Love Living in the City because really the songs after that are either mediocre or just plain garbage. Uh, I mean, Getting the Brush, what the fuck is that? The, that song is terrible awful. So, More Beer has less songs, but doesn't have those crappy songs that I like to skip past. Now, one thing I always liked about Lee Ving is that he was not PC at all. And I loved that. I mean, the guy came off as a racist, misogynistic pig. I mean, look at songs like The Trouble With Women, The Mouth Don't Stop. Uh, even though I think that song was written by Philo Kramer. Not me. But another song that has since been removed from re releases of More Beer is the excellent Strangulation. You want to talk about misogynistic, un PC lyrics? This song has it all. Take a listen. Yeah, so that song was completely removed from the newer releases of More Beer, which is a damn shame because I love that song. But there's great songs on there like Responsibility, where Vane pulls out a badass harmonica solo. And then, of course, you have the title track, More Beer, which is just tons of fun. It's a fun song to play, fun song to cover. It is just a blast. Uh, but then you have Have a Beer with Fear, another beer drinking song. Have a beer with fear! Have a beer with fear! Have a with fear. Have a fear. And the hilarious bomb the Russians. Because the Duke would do it, he would be getting Jewish. Bomb the Russians, bomb the Russians, bomb the Russians, bomb the Russians. Again, these guys were so not PC, which really sucks because now Weaving is old and he's gotten PC. He were, he's edited some of the lyrics to some of his songs, Strangulation got yanked, and Fear's like starting to go all commercial, selling sweaters and just garbage. Just not the Fear that I know, and I don't like it. And the most recent Fear album, American Beer, seemed so watered down and PC compared to the other albums that I hardly ever listened to it. I don't know if I've even listened to it in the past 10 years. So anyway, More Beer, excellent album. I recommend it. I also recommend the record. I also recommend Have Another Beer with Beer. But More Beer, that's the one for me. Number three. All right. 
Alright, so the next one is going to be Minor Threat, the complete discography, which combines two EPs and their only full-length album, Out of Step. Now, if I had to choose between Out of Step and the Minor Threat EP, it's the Minor Threat EP, hands down. It's so much more aggressive, so much more angry, even though Out of Step is pretty angry as well. But that one focuses more on like getting fucked over by friends and loved ones, where Minor Threat is just miners going nuts, angry, screaming. But the sound quality is awesome. The guitar riffs are just top notch, uh, with you know Lyle Presler on the guitar, and it's just amazing. But the good thing is I don't have to pick between the two because it's all in this one collection here that I picked up over 20 years ago, and I still listen to it a lot today. The album starts off with some instant classics like Filler and I Don't Want to Hear It. Again, both songs were covered by Slayer on their Undisputed Attitude album, released back in 96. So if you aren't searching for that online yet, you will be. Now, everyone and their grandmother has covered Straight Edge. Basically, the Straight Edge movement adopted that song as like their theme. Straight Edge wasn't the ideals of the whole band. That was Ian McKay's thing. Uh, the rest of the band, they didn't give a fuck about being Straight Edge. And that's kind of how I feel too. Straight Edge people are like the angriest fucking people that I, that I know. It's like, smoke a joint, drink a beer, and chill the fuck out. You have other angry anthems such as Small Man, Big Mouth, I like that one a lot. Bottled violence, uh, basically what the punk scene was full of at the time, a bunch of drunken idiots fighting. And then, of course, the self-titled song, Minor Threat, which is just one of my favorite Minor Threat songs, if not my favorite Minor Threat song. Pennywise covers that one. In fact, I saw Pennywise cover that song live back in 95, and I just flipped out in the pit when they started playing that one. So, Minor Threat's iconic. I mean, so many bands have been influenced by Minor Threat. Uh, There's straight Washington, D.C. hardcore. Henry Rollins comes from that camp. Minor Threat, you can't go wrong. Then you have a few other great songs. Like, another one of my favorites is In My Eyes, which was covered by Rage Against the Machine, and Rage did an excellent job with that one. You tell me that I make no difference. And then we move on to the Out of Step album. Like I mentioned before, I don't like it nearly as much as the earlier Minor Threat stuff because that stuff was a lot more aggressive. But Out of Step is still a great album, so I recommend the complete discography. That and really, that's the only way you're gonna pick these albums up anyway. From start to finish, it's excellent. I ain't no goddamn son of a bitch. Number two. Think about it, baby.
Alright, so the first time I heard the Misfits, I was blown away, and I was like, I got to get this album. Misfits Collection 1. So, I was well aware that Danzig was part of the Misfits. I did not care for Danzig's solo stuff, so I was kind of close-minded and didn't even bother to check out Misfits until I was over at a friend's house and he popped in Collection 1 and I had to have it. In fact, I took it. <laughs> and I still have that copy today. I had to have it that bad. I just took the album and he never asked about it, so I still own it today. The first time I heard The Misfits was just, it was unbelievable. The, the classic punk rock sound with Danzig's melodic vocals was just a brilliant combination. And the imagery that Misfits adopted with, you know, ghouls and the, the, the crimson ghost skull, which uh, you could arguably say that logo is more iconic than DRI's. In fact, yeah, it is. But the imagery that this band presented with horror themes was just completely out of the ordinary, completely different. Yet, the band was still aggressive and at the same time had melodies. It was, it was excellent stuff. So at the time this album was released, Static Age had never been released. If you're familiar with Static Age, then you know that album was finally released in 97, although it was recorded back in 78. Now, this collection has some alternate versions of songs that appeared on that album, such as Where Eagles Dare. We walk the streets at night We go where eagles dare They pick up every movement They pick up every loser Bullet President for everybody in the street Right down in Ryan Kennedy shattered head hits on three Right down in Ryan Hollywood Babylon Where did they come from tonight? They use excellent versions on this collection here. Now, some of my favorite songs has got to be Skulls. Teenagers from Mars is absolutely catchy as hell, and I still sing that one all the time. Business. I turned into a Martian. And then London Dungeon, uh, the song about when Danzig got arrested for fighting some fucking yokels. You know, started shit with him in London and he had to sit in jail. Uh, that's where he wrote the lyrics to that song. That's an excellent song as well. So back in the day, I mean, we pretty much, our choices for the Misfits was The Collection, the Legacy of Brutality, and Walk Among Us. So this collection definitely is on the top of that list. I mean, now that Static Age has been released, I like that album a lot, but I grew up with the collection. That's the one that got me into the Misfits. It's always gonna be my favorite. Honorable Mentions. Six pack. What the 
the unknown morn I'm the demon cowering in the corner I'm the sexton spade, the new throne clay I'm the Number one. All right, so this one was going to be number one for me by a long shot. Dead Kennedy's Plastic Surgery Disasters. This album is just brilliant. Now, I know most people put Fresh Food for Rotting Vegetables as their number one Dead Kennedy's album. But in my opinion, their second album, Plastic Surgery Disasters, is way better. For one, they got a much better drummer with Darren Peligro. I mean, the guy just bust out fast beats and the energy that he brought on the drums just upped what the Dead Kennedys were bringing to the table. Now, in between Fresh Fruit and Plastic Surgery Disasters, Dead Kennedys released In God We Trust, Inc which was a fast, hardcore EP, which, like I said, it, it's hardcore. It focused more on the hardcore elements. Uh, every song was pretty much fast and aggressive, and that EP is excellent. It, it's so good. And luckily for us, that EP is included with Plastic Surgery Disasters. Now, this album was released in 1982 on Alternative Tentacle Records, the record label created by Jello Biafra, singer from Dead Kennedys. But if you're familiar with their recent bullshit arguing and going to court over royalties and such, then you probably know that none of the Dead Kennedys albums are released on Alternative Tentacle Records anymore, which is bullshit. So all of my releases are Alternative Tentacles. I won't buy any of the re-releases. I'm not going to give um, those other money grubbers any of that cash, so... It sucks that, it, that this squabble has tarnished the Dead Kennedys' legacy, but eh, whatever. Anyway, let's talk about the album. So, first off, the album cover is pretty iconic, where it's just uh, this hands picture by Michael Wells, who actually won an award for this picture of a starving Ethiopian child, little shriveled hand, uh, into a big white man hand. So this uh, was an iconic album cover for sure. This album starts off with an amazing track, Government Flu, which is fast, it's aggressive. East Bay Ray's guitars have never sounded better. And Jello's voice is just, in my opinion, this is the best Jello's voice that sounded on any of the Dead Kennedys albums right here. But then you move on to Terminal Preppy, which is the song about going to college. And it's just hilarious. This song has always made me laugh. Just take a listen. Then the song immediately goes into Trust Your Mechanic, which is basically Trust Your Doctor. Doctor said you need surgery now. If you did good, kill the side effects, fuck up something else. And then we have Well Paid Scientist, which is extremely heavy for the time. Really fast, and it's funny. You're a Well Paid Scientist, you won't be talking fast. You know you're always right, cause you know how to move it step by step. Speaking of funny, check out Forest Fire. I ate weird berries in the woods. Now I'm seeing colors. I'm getting higher. I think I'll start a forest fire. And another song that'll leave you in stitch is Winnebago Warrior. Near the campgrounds, hold the chairs. Beat Doritos to the bears. Honey, 
Jellaby Offer's lyrics are hilarious, they're ingenious, and he's one of the biggest influences on my life, period. The guy is just brilliant, and he cracks me up. So then we have the song Riot, which starts off all slow, until the riot kicks in, and the song just follows the mood of a riot. And it's hilarious how at the end, Jello realizes that he had a blast rioting, but now his home is gone. Tomorrow you're homeless. Tonight it's a blast. Tomorrow you're homeless. Tonight it's a blast. Tomorrow you're homeless. Tonight it's a blast. And then we have the politically heavy song, and probably my favorite song on the album, Bleed For Me. When Cowboy Ronnie comes to town, puts out his tongue at human rights. And then, of course, you have the iconic DK logo designed by Winston Smith. You might recognize that name from 1984. Jello wanted Winston to design a logo that was easy enough to spray paint on the walls and tag all over the place, which he succeeded. Because God knows I used to tag that DK all over the walls in my high school. It was fun to uh, desecrate school with uh, the famous DK. So out of all the Dead Kennedys albums, which are all excellent, Frank and Christ, Fresh Fruit, like I mentioned before, Bedtime for Democracy. This is my favorite one. It's always been my favorite one. It's always been my go-to Dead Kennedys album. And I mean, just from the humor, the aggressiveness, and just how good it sounds, how good Jello's voice sounds. It's just a top-notch album from start to finish, and I highly recommend it to anyone, even if you're not into punk. I've gotten people who are not into punk to buy this album. It's that good. So definitely check it out.